everybody, this is Ali from Vintage Page Designs and today we're going to be making a set of three pamphlet stitch notebooks using handmade paper covers. Let me just pull this off so you can see. We have a cream garden handmade paper, burnt umber and this embossed cream paper. And inside is a single signature and then a little pocket on either side. And we, I'll show you how to make one, then you'll make the other two yourself and then make this cute little gift for somebody for Father's Day, for Mother's Day, for graduation, for a little birthday gift or even um, like a shower favour or something. So that will be today's project. Okay, so let's go over the tools and materials you're going to need to make your book. You'll need to make a signature which is six inches high by four inches across and I will put the metric measurements in the comments um, below. Um, opened out it's obviously eight inches across and I will also put a link to a video on how to make um, a really good signature. Um, this has six pages folded over so 12 in total but this is fairly thick paper. I would go with um, eight to ten folded sheets of paper if, um, if it were thinner. So just sort of use your judgment on, on um, how many to use. You'll need a template which is six inches high, the exact height of the signature, and then a couple inches across. It doesn't matter how wide it is. We're just going to use this to um, mark our sewing holes. And I like to use a different colour so it shows up against the white. Our covers, um, it's going to be an eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter inch piece of handmade paper. You could also use a piece of scrapbook paper or heavy cardstock. Um, this is a thick um, a handmade paper called Cream Garden. In terms of tools, you'll need a bone folder. You'll need an awl to punch your sewing holes. A sharp X-Acto knife with a fresh blade. I use a stylus to make score lines. You could also use the tip of your bone folder. A sharp pencil a metal ruler and also a, um, a square or triangle which can be metal or plastic. You'll need thread. This is a four ply wax linen thread. You could also use a three ply wax linen thread or if it's unwaxed you just want a little block of beeswax um, to wax your thread before you sew. That'll make sure the signatures stay, um, not signatures sorry, the stitches stay in place. And you will also want a book binding needle. Also very helpful is to have a punching cradle. It can be made of wood, it can be made of cardboard, um, it could, but you could also use a large um, catalogue or phone book opened up and you could also use that to make your signatures. Um, I'm sorry, to make your sewing holes in your signature. So the first thing we're going to do is create the score lines in your cover. Just check if this has a front and a back. This is my front. This is my back, so I'm going to work on the back. We could, this measures eight and a quarter across, so our first score line is going to be straight down the centre, which is four and one eighth. I would mark it first with a pencil in three different spots. Four and one eighth, four and one eighth, and four and one eighth. And then I will use my triangle or square to score this central vertical line. You want to line up your um, square just slightly to the left of the pencil mark you made so that the score line goes exactly on the pencil marks. Hold that steady and just score several times. Do not, do not fold this line, it's probably hard to see on the camera. That score line's right there. Don't fold it just yet. You want to turn your cover 90 degrees. And then we're going to measure up from the bottom two and one eighth. This is what we're going to fold up to make the pockets. So two and one eighth, measure it in three different places, two and one eighth. And here, two and one eighth. Line up your square just to the left of the pencil mark. Hold it steady and score on the pencil marks. So 
So you probably won't be able to see very well, but I have a central score line here and a score line here. Don't fold them yet. What you want to do is get your X-Acto blade. And what I might do is just do a pencil line so you can actually see it. Don't do this on your finished book. This is just so you can see on the video the lines. Here are my score lines, but don't you use a pencil. This is just so you can see clearly. Then what we're going to do, we're going to cut straight down this center portion from where the lines intersect to the edge. Put your metal ruler in place, hold it steady. Make sure you have a nice sharp blade in there. Let's do one cut. What we'll do is we're going to take off a tiny triangle here a tiny triangle here so that when we fold up our pockets they don't sort of um, knock against each other. I wouldn't measure this I would just do like a slim triangle about mm, not even sure that's an eighth of an inch you can kind of see it's just a slim triangle and I'm gonna just flip it the other way to make the other triangle. It's, they're not exactly perfectly even but that's okay. There's the other little triangle, you can just get rid of those. Now we can fold up our um, score lines. So you can fold up one pocket, fold up the second pocket, and that's why we have this triangle so they don't kind of hit one another. We can fold it in half, making sure everything lines up. and smooths down really firmly with your bone folder. This handmade paper is thick, so you need to be fairly forceful with your bone folder. So here we have our book cover, and I'll probably just erase these lines now. But you, you won't need those lines because you'll be able to see your score lines quite easily. Okay, so here we have our completed cover. The next thing we're going to do is make a little template so we can punch our sewing holes. So the next thing we're do, going to do is make some um, holes to sew um, this, this notebook. It's going to be a pamphlet stitch. It's going to be five hole pamphlet stitch. This um, template is the exact height of the signature and the cover is a slightly is one eighth uh, longer, so barely, but just a tiny bit, just to give us a little room for error. Here's our template. We're going to fold it in half. That finds the center point. We're going to fold it in half again. So now we have four equal portions, or three different three evenly spaced holes for sewing. We're going to add one on the head and one on the tail, about, I'd say half an inch, half an inch like that. So you can grab your punching cradle. I want you to make sure that your signature is evenly, all the pages are ev all even together. I want you to put your cover into the punching cradle. I want you to put your signatures, center them. You'll have a tiny, like a sixteenth on either side. And then I want you to put your punching template right in the middle of your signature. And then get your all and punch through cover and signature all at the same time. So one two, three. It's a little tough because the cover is fairly thick, but by doing them all together, you're really reducing your chance of error and you know that they're all going to line up nicely. Okay, you can discard this template now. Try and just set this to one side. Try and keep those together for the moment. You want to grab your thread and you're going to measure three times the height of the book and that will be more than enough um, thread to sew the book. Do so you want to get your bookbinding needle? You want to thread 
put your thread on there. Then carefully remove this from the punching cradle. Hopefully everything is still lined up. One way to tear is just lift it to the light and you can see all the light shining through all the holes. You're in good shape. And that looks good. So if we want to tie our knot in the centre on the inside of the book, we're going to start on the inside of the book. Sometimes you want to tie the knot on the outside and maybe put beads so you would start on the outside. But for today, we're going to start on the inside of the book. The holes are one, two, three, four, five. We're going to start at hole number three. We're going to go from the outside to the inside. No, I'm sorry, inside to outside. <laughs> Ignore that last part. Pull through and leave a reasonable tail. You can leave two inches. So out hole number three. We need to go in hole number four. Into hole number four. Pull through and tighten. I need to go out hole number five, inside to outside. Oops. I need to go back up to hole number four. Now there is another thread in here, so be careful that you don't split through the thread that's already there. Just wiggle the needle. And you can see, I actually see I have split the thread. So you just move the thread to one side, push the needle to the other. Up to hole number four. Now you're gonna skip hole three and go up to hole number two from the inside to the outside. Go into hole number one from the outside to the inside through hole number two inside to outside without splitting that thread that was there before and then we're going to feed it back through the center hole you might want to hang on to this thread here and pull it tight so that when you go through you don't split it back through hole number three to where you started. You've got your original tail and you have your needle and thread. You can get rid of the needle now. You want one thread on one side to the left of the centre and one thread to the right of the centre. You want to tie a nice square knot. Just double check all your stitches are tight before you tie the knot. And if they're not tight just go back and tighten them up a nice square knot in the centre and trim off your excess thread. Okay, grab your bone folder and bold fold down firmly. Here we have a cute little book, here are our pockets. And the final step we're going to do is tape down with double stick tape these edges here. This edge will remain open so you can slide in um, little notes. So you want to use some double stick tape, which I forgot to mention at the beginning. You just want to put a thin strip. This is quarter inch um, strong double stick tape. You want to put a strip against this outside edge to peel up the backing and then stick this down and rub it really firmly with your bone folder. Here's this pocket. I did the same on the other side. I put a piece here, fold it up, and here's your other pocket. So there is um, the first of the three pamphlet stitch books. So I want you to then make uh, two more books. This is with the burnt umber, the handmade, oops, that's upside down. The handmade burnt umber paper then this is the cream embossed um, paper so you make a stack of three little notebooks like this um, I decided to make a belly band to put around them with um, a scrap of the burnt umber this is I want to say two inches wide let me see yep two inches wide so I have this little package and then you can decorate it how you like you could um, I like torn muslin fabric so you could tie a cute little piece of torn fabric around there with a bow that might look quite sweet and maybe put a tag 
I think I am going to use um, this old French dictionary paper. I tore a strip off this French dictionary paper. I'm just going to sort of layer up the belly band like this. I got some double stick tape on here. Layer up the belly band. I kind of like these layers. And I'm a sucker for old dictionaries. Um, and then I have some, I could put the muslin here too. That might look quite nice actually. Um, I have some different ribbons. I know we, I know you all have ribbon. That looks pretty nice. It's a little dull. Ah, the green. This is some green, like twill tape. It is three eighths of an inch. I kind of like that for a little contrast. So I'm going to cut a piece of this. But I know you all have a ton of ribbon, twine, fabric, raffia would look really cute. Um, finish up the little stack of notebooks, however you like. And make them feminine, can make them masculine, however you like. I'm going to tie a knot before I tie my bow, so it's nice and secure. So I could just leave it like that with these trailing. I could do a cute bow, just tie the bow upside down. Decorate these little notebooks however you like, and make a really cute little package. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Email me at ali at vintagepagedesigns.com or visit the Facebook group. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.